Thinking is the place where intelligent actions begin. We pause long enough to look more carefully at a situation, to see more of its character, to think about why it is happening, to notice how it is affecting us and others. And this week's opening quote comes from Margaret J. Wheatley. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Looking at the problems of the world is very important, folks, and it's very important that we look at the problems and think about them intelligently and commence appropriate action to deal with the problems that we're facing on this planet. And one of the issues we as a public are facing is our approach to dealing with the problems that we face, the way we look at them, the causes that we often perceive for these problems and the action that we take. For example, very often we will approach politicians and ask them to rectify situations. For example, in the coal seam gas industry here in Australia, there is a large attempt to approach the politicians and petition the politicians and appeal to their better judgment and appeal to their sense of morals and ask these people to act responsibly. But what we have to realize is that these people are not going to act responsibly. If they were going to act responsibly, they wouldn't have let the industry into the country to begin with. You see, our problem when dealing with these people is that we expect them to show compassion and to have a heart and to actually do something sane, do something that is good for the people. But what we're not realizing is that these people are psychopaths. They're not going to fix anything. They revel in all of the damage and mayhem and the hardship that they cause, and they do it simply because that is what psychopaths do. So we've got to understand that we're never going to see any remedy from petitioning the system or asking the system or asking those who work within the system to please heed our cause. Because even those who may heed our cause are simply not able to because they're forced to operate within the psychopathic parameters of the system itself. And this affects their ability to actually be able to get anything done, whether they're psychopaths or not. Because even if they are not, they are forced to operate within psychopathic parameters. The only place we're ever really going to find remedy is when we remember who and what we are and realize that the politicians are actually our employees. That's where the remedy will be found, folks, because it is then that we will remember that we are able to not ask these people, would they please do something, but simply tell them what we require them to do, and if they don't do it, then they're in abusive office and we dismiss them. But again, we've got to have the population willing to do this, which means you've got to have a respectful and informed population who are willing to stand up and stand together on vital issues. You see, this is why I've always said that no matter what problem we're addressing, it always has to come back down to grassroots. It's got to come back down to the individual changing their perspective. You see, the most important thing anybody can really do in the world at the moment is to get to know your neighbours, become friends with people. And that might seem like I'm not doing anything, I'm not combating the system in any way, but you are because you are building strong ties in the community and we will never combat the system if we don't have a strong communal response to the actions of government. And we're not going to have a strong communal response until we begin to respect each other. You've got to have a respectful community that's friends with each other so they'll all stand up together in the face of adversity. But if you've got people judging each other by social and economic parameters, then most people like to point the finger at the other guy and shout the other guy down because it makes them feel important. This is what happens when you take all of the creative potential and freedom away from people and you enslave them to a fictional social and economic model most especially an economic model which has its basis in sociopathic parameters, such as our business and social systems do, then if they get a chance to revel in the despair of somebody else, they very often do so because people are trained to think this way. They like to see people suffering around them so they can point the finger and feel better about themselves. This is true for many people, folks, and it does happen in many cases. This is why you have things like the tall poppy syndrome, which is very rampant here in Australia. Australia is famous for this type of attitude. We have this attitude where we 
love to support the underdog, you know, wave flags and battle for the little guy, the little battler who's trying to make it, and we'll all be on his side. But as soon as he makes it to the top, and as soon as he gets to the top of the pile, we'll call him a tall poppy, and we'll shout him down, and we'll ridicule him. And then if he falls flat on his face, we'll all point at him and laugh. That's Australian mentality to a T. Australian mentality is some of the most ego-driven, sociopathic mentality in the world. But again, it's because these people have been programmed to think this way. And of course, the way they've been programmed, ladies and gentlemen, is through their television sets, because the media is very good at this. The media will always look at the little underdog and support them and convince the population to support them. And then once they get to the top, they will plaster them everywhere and they will make sure everybody is completely oversaturated with this individual. And they will go on and on and on and on about how great they are until everybody is sick of hearing about it. And so everybody starts to shout them down. And this is subtle programming, folks. This is how they do it. This is how they train the population in what to think. They don't train them how to think. They train them in what to think, and the people believe what the media tell them they believe. Now, of course, this type of tall poppy programming all begins in the education system, folks, how they will vilify someone who stands out in the class. The teacher will reward and excel people far beyond what they deserve, and this is, of course, anybody who toes the line and does what they're told or anybody who respects authority, and they will demean anybody who questions their authority in any way. They'll make you stand in the corner, they'll make you wear a dunce hat, and they'll ridicule you. And it's the same sort of approach that the media takes. It's just presented to you in a different way. And this is also why people end up having completely the wrong approach to addressing any of the problems we face because they approach these problems in the way the media suggests to them that they should approach them. We petition our governments or we join political parties ourselves. We think, wow, I might join the Labor Party or the Liberal Party so I can go in there and make a difference. And then you get caught up in the wheels of that corruption and you can't help but be corrupted by default because you're working within corrupt parameters. And so really what we have to do is step above the whole thing, folks. This is what I've been saying for years. But again, we can't step above anything until we have a united community. Now, we've really got to step back, folks, and just look at this situation and call it for what it is. I mean, the world is completely out of control. All of these wars that they're ramping up, this is all just to try to convince the people that we need these criminals to stay in charge. And now they're bringing in new metadata laws, anti-terrorism metadata laws. So you've got to watch what you tag your online stuff with, anything that suggests terrorism. And what suggests terrorism, folks? Well, it could be any word that they want to name as a word that suggests terrorism, when really the real terrorists on this planet are our governments. These are the ones who are creating all of the mayhem. These are the ones who are creating all of the hardship. And even if terrorism was real, as they say it is, even if it was exactly what they say it is, even if what we're seeing in the Middle East was really a bunch of Islamic extremists, all of this is a result of the West anyway. It's a result of what we've gone in and done to these people. And this is a result of corrupt Western governments. Every single war and piece of damage we've got on this planet, folks, is a result of government. Everything. It all comes from these people. Admittedly, there is certain controlling hands above government, but it is government that puts the legislation in place which allows the corporate rape to continue, which allows the wars to continue, and allows all of this mayhem to continue. Look what's going on in Ukraine, folks. There's like 60,000 people been killed in Ukraine now. It's absolutely ridiculous over this whole concept of ownership of land, which is completely absurd. Look at what's going on in Israel and Palestine. And this has been an ongoing thing for so long now that it just I, I just can't understand why people won't give it the attention it deserves. And Israel just keeps going. Gaza is on the verge of collapse at the moment because it's not getting any aid in. And Israel is just taking pot shots at people in Gaza at every opportunity, shooting farmers, shooting fishermen, shooting everybody they can from the fences and borders. And we don't hear anything about this on the mainstream news. And this is just so typical of Israel. The steps that this country takes are just beyond me, folks. It seems to be above all international law. I mean, forget international law, folks. There is no international law. And if people think there is, well, I give you Israel. And the myriad of crimes and war crimes and human rights abuses that this state is continually carrying out. 
even the war in Syria, folks. This is a covert war against Syria that's been conducted by Israel and has been from the start. There hasn't been any rebels there trying to overthrow the government and establish freedom for themselves. There's been a bunch of Israeli insurgents go in there and train all of these so-called Islamic extremists and create the whole mess from the ground up. And folks, look, when I talk about Israel, I need to clarify that I'm not talking about the Jews. What I'm talking about is Israel, the state, the entity, the mechanism that it is. And what the state of Israel is, is an attack dog that is run by banking cartels. And the state of Israel has nothing to do with the Jewish people. It's simply using the Jewish people as a smokescreen by which it can carry out its actions. But the state of Israel has been hijacked. Even Oded Ginnan's plan for greater Israel has been hijacked. It's simply a mechanism that can be used to destabilize the Middle East. The people that are running Israel don't give a damn about the state of Israel. They don't give a damn about the Jewish people. What they care about is destabilizing the world. And Israel is the mechanism that's being used to do it. But again, it isn't the Jewish people that's doing it. It's the banking cartels that control the place. And everything on the global stage is just being taken to a ridiculous degree regarding Israel, folks. It's, it's absolutely absurd. I mean, here's Israel, an undeclared nuclear power, will not sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, is committing war crime after war crime, is showing flagrant disregard for international law, and wants to go and bomb Iran simply because they want to have a nuclear energy program, and yet we're not allowed to say anything about it. It's like you're just not allowed to question the actions of Israel in any way, and if you do, you're anti-Semitic. And I mean, the reality is that the vast majority of people in Israel aren't even Semites, whereas those that they are constantly waging war against are. I mean, it's utterly ridiculous. They're actually creating laws in Europe now to criminalise any questioning of the Holocaust. I mean, there was a man just jailed in France for questioning the Holocaust. That's all he did was question it, folks. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is someone being put in jail for asking a question and wanting to investigate an event which is having a massive impact in the world today. I mean, everything Israel is doing is riding on the fact that so many Jews were persecuted during the Holocaust as if it was a specifically Jewish event, which it wasn't. I mean, there were so many people in the camps that were not Jews. It was anybody who dissented against the government was in the camps, gypsies, all sorts of people. But we're not allowed to investigate this. And someone who did investigate it was actually put in jail by a government that claims it's a democratic, civilized nation. And this flies in the face of everything they've just done, folks. If it's a free democratic nation then you're able to ask questions and what they've done is they've reverted to dark ages mentality and they've put someone in jail simply for asking a question and if you do want to question the figures or investigate the numbers at all it's called holocaust denial i mean this is ridiculous folks even this context for use of the word denial it doesn't make any sense at all to investigate something and to want to investigate the figures and really look into the matter isn't Holocaust denial, it's simply research. Why would questioning something be called denial? It doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, if someone decides they want to research evolution, is it called evolution denial? If someone decides they want to investigate how the pyramids were built, is it called Egyptology denial? If someone wants to investigate science and make a new science breakthrough, is it called scientific denial? No, of course it isn't. But if anyone wants to research anything about the Holocaust, it's called Holocaust denial. I mean, what is this, folks? The simple fact that it's called Holocaust denial, to me, means it needs to be researched. It should be researched simply because of the use of that term, because that term is being used out of context And it's being used to silence any discussion or any questions. I mean, you are able to research the Holocaust, but if during that research you find any questions, then you're not allowed to ask those questions because if you do ask any questions that question the official narrative at all, the questions are swept under the carpet, you are called a Holocaust denier, and you are labelled anti-Semitic for even asking these questions. And again, this is coming from Israel. 
And Israel itself is built on denial. They deny the Nakba. They deny that there were any Palestinians living there when they arrived. They deny the hundreds of massacres that happened in the first few years they were there. They deny that they've been ethnically cleansing for the last 67 years. They deny that they are using illegal weapons. They deny that they are committing war crimes. And everything about Israel and everything that it's done to the Palestinian people has been a war crime. The entire country has been built on denial. And yet, if you question their motivation and question the numbers or question anything about the Holocaust, you're called a Holocaust denier. It's absolutely absurd, folks. And as I mentioned earlier, to make it even more ridiculous, if you do question the figures, you're called anti-Semitic for doing so when the people who are populating the Israeli government at the moment and 90% of the people in Israel are not even Semites. They're of European descent. In fact, the Palestinians have far more Semitic blood than 90% of the people in Israel. And for me, that creates a problem. And personally, I think the Holocaust should be investigated simply because there are so many people who question it. So obviously the figures are in question. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been dozens of books written on the topic. So let's open the matter up for investigation and lay it to rest once and for all. And the first people who should welcome such an investigation should be the people of Israel and the Jewish people, because that way they can prove to everybody the story is true. And it seems very interesting that the people of Israel and the Jewish people are the only ones who do not want the Holocaust investigated. Truth does not fear investigation. And to me, that is a bit of a red flag, which means to me that it absolutely should be investigated, as should the Nakba, as should the ethnic cleansing that happened in Palestine, as should the real cause behind the war in Ukraine, as should the real motivation and driving force behind ISIL should be investigated as well. I mean, here is this group of so-called Islamic extremists wanting to create a so-called Islamic state, and all they are doing is destabilizing the Muslim world and killing Muslims, and they are turning the entire world against Islam. Now, who is it that would like to turn the entire world against Islam? And also, folks, the concept that these people want to set up an Islamic state also justifies the existence of a Jewish state. So it's very easy to see that it is not any Muslims that are behind ISIS. ISIL is whatever they're called. It's Israel and the West that is behind ISIS, folks, because that is the only group of people who stand to gain from the actions of ISIS. Israel stands to gain because it is all of the countries within the boundaries of the Greater Israel Project that are being destabilized and Western governments get to benefit because they get to lock all of their citizens down into a police state under the guise of protecting them from terrorism. And soon, my friends, the dissent will be seen as terrorism. Mark my words, if we don't pay attention to what our governments are doing now, then this is where it's going. Any questioning of the actions of the criminals and psychopaths who are running this world will soon be seen as terrorism, simply because the people of the world are not paying attention. And what they're not paying attention to is how the whole thing is being puppeteered. Because it is, folks. It's a puppet show. And you watch, folks. The way things are going, pretty soon, if you even question the war on terror, you'll be called a terrorist denier. So people really need to look at this and smell the coffee. And don't forget, folks, that as I pointed out during the last season, and as I've mentioned on a couple of press TV slots lately, there are at least 50,000 ghost soldiers on the U.S. payroll in Iraq, and there are fifty to 60,000 ISIL militants in the area as well. And when I look at that, folks, and I see all these ISIL militants driving brand-new Toyota Hiluxes and all using American weapons, then I cannot help but conclude that one and one equals two. And yet again, what we are seeing is a Western-run operation and an entire false flag with one goal, and that is to rally the Western world against Islam. Because the war on terror is not a war on terror, folks. It's a war on Islam. That's what it is. And you look at it, folks. We had France say that they want to recognize the Palestinian state. Then Benjamin Netanyahu said as a response that things would go very bad for France because they made that decision. Then a week later, we saw 
the Paris shooting, blamed on Islamic militants, and suddenly France is rallying against the Muslim world. We had Japan say they were going to contribute $100 million to help rebuild Gaza, and then suddenly we have two Japanese journalists kidnapped and apparently beheaded on television to raise the ire of Japan against the Muslim world. Then we saw the shootings in Copenhagen again, which served to raise the ire of Europe against the Muslim world, and this was closely followed by a very well-produced video and a very theatrical video of the beheading of 21 Egyptians in Libya, again to raise the ire of the world against the Muslim world. And folks, the beheadings in Libya was a particularly interesting video because it was so well produced. And again, there was just not enough blood to indicate that these beheadings were real. And the closing scene was a very theatrical scene of the ocean that was literally full of blood. They must have dumped at least a barrel of blood into this ocean so they could film a slow motion wave so we would get the concept of oceans of blood. Another very telling thing about the video is that it was delivered to the Nation of the Cross. This, of course, is designed to create an us-and-them mentality within people, the concept that it's the Christians against the Muslims. It's the good guys and the bad guys. It's us and them. There is, of course, no Nation of the Cross, folks. They're trying to unite all of the Western world as Christian nations to rise up against Islam. And this is all being done very, very theatrically, folks. And it's very easy to see where this is all going. But the most significant thing about these videos, the most significant thing about all of these beheadings is that they are being done in a very non-Muslim way. They are being denounced by every Muslim nation on earth. And yet they are all being blamed on Islam. And they are all serving to unite the Western world in a war which will be East against West. And of course, right at the centre of this war will be the need to protect God's chosen land of Israel. I mean, can you see this, folks? It's really quite obvious when you step back and put all the pieces together what's going on. And as I said, the result of all of these beheadings and all of these so-called terror incidents has been to rally the entire world against Islam. And when you look at the actions of ISIS, ISIL, or whatever they're called this week, hatred of the Muslim world by the West is the only possible result of the actions of ISIS. Of course it is. So who stands to gain from this, folks? You really need to look at it. The whole thing is being done to split the world into East versus West and to rally the Western nations against Islam while locking the Western world down into a police state and a control grid at the same time. So this is all being done by someone who wants to bring down the Muslim world and lock the Western world into a police state. Now who would that be, folks? That would be the banking cartels that are running all of our countries and who are also running Israel and who are carrying out the actions that Israel is carrying out for which the Jewish people are getting the blame. That's who's doing it, folks. Israel has been the main source of instability in the Middle East ever since its inception and Israel is populated by Khazars, Khazar imposters who have no claim to the land and unfortunately the Jewish people are the ones who are getting the blame for their actions. I mean, 10 points for cleverness, folks, in the way they've constructed this system. It really is an incredibly clever system, the way they've put this together. And through control and manipulation of the media, they've been able to hold it together. But I think the wheels are falling off now, and it's becoming apparent to people that this whole thing is one big scam, and mankind is being played like a fiddle. But what do we do about it, folks? What do we do about this situation? Again, we can't petition our governments, we can't vote people in and vote people out. The people of the world just have to stop what they're doing and pay attention and say, hey, we're not going to do this anymore. All the soldiers out there that are doing what they're told need to stop doing what they're told. They need to put down their weapons and go home. I was speaking to an Israeli the other day, actually, at an art fest. I was invited to an art display out the back of Byron Bay, and I was speaking to an Israeli there, and I said to him, I've been to Gaza and I've met the Palestinian people and they're beautiful people. 
And he said to me, yes, I've been to Gaza too in the army. And yes, they are beautiful people. And I didn't like what I was doing. I didn't like being there because they're beautiful people. But I had no choice. I had to be there because my government made me. But that's the thing. He did have a choice. You can say no, because this is a moral issue. And not only should you say no, but you should arrest the person who commanded you to go and kill these children. That is the moral stance that people need to begin taking. The men on this planet need to begin to re-embrace the warrior spirit and stand up for what is good. They need to stand in their integrity and refuse any order which causes them to deviate from their moral compass. And if they are in a position in the army or the police force, then they also need to arrest the person who gave them that order. And if the media spins the wrong story on what happened, then that media personality also needs to be arrested because the media, the Western media, are as complicit in war crimes and crimes against humanity as any government official or any maniac who's ever committed any crime. The talking heads in the mainstream media and the lies that they spin the public is one of the biggest problems we face because it is these people who have spun these stories and perpetuated these lies. It is these people who have sold it all to the public. We just get told we're not allowed to do things. We get told we're not allowed to investigate the figures of the Holocaust. Even though there was a claim that 6 million Jews died in World War I, we're still told that we're not allowed to investigate the figures. We're not allowed to lay the matter to rest. We just take the media's word for all of these things and we get told, no, don't go there, you're not allowed to look. And anything that I'm told I'm not allowed to investigate, well, I just have to investigate it by default because I don't do no, I don't do can't, I don't do being told that I can't look at something because all that exists on this planet is people. There is no one who has any more authority or any more right than anybody else. We are just people. We are all born with equal potential. We are all born with equal rights, equal standing. And nobody has the right to tell anybody that they can't look at something, that they can't investigate something, and that they can't have an opinion on something. Anybody who does put such stringent rules and guidelines in place is a tyrant and is committing crimes against humanity. And that's really all our governments do, folks, is they commit crimes against humanity. Look at all of our current regimes that are all supporting the war crime that is Gaza Strip. Look at David Cameron that is supporting the war crime that is Guantanamo Bay, even took steps to cover up British involvement in Guantanamo Bay, and is continuing to support the war crime, which is the war on Islam, thinly disguised as the fake war on terror. It's a war on Islam and it's a war on dissent. It's a war on the people. It's a war against anybody who speaks out against the criminal actions of the psychopaths who are running our governments and the warmongering and raping of this earth that they continue to indulge themselves in. Look at Barack Obama. Why hasn't he passed an executive order saying that everybody in Guantanamo Bay has to be released immediately. He passed executive orders saying it's okay to execute civilians, it's okay to execute members of his own country and citizens of his own country if they're suspected of supporting terrorism, whatever that may be, and yet he goes out and wages wholesale terrorism against the rest of the world and allows these people, these innocent people who've been convicted of no crime, to continue to be tortured, sometimes tortured to death, in Guantanamo Bay. He writes decrees which go and bomb civilians in Pakistan. I mean, look at that, folks. Going and bombing innocent people in Pakistan and claiming that all the 1140 or whatever it is civilians that have been killed for the 43 terrorists, possible terrorists that they may have killed, claiming this is just collateral damage and it's all good. They're doing things in America's best interests. The entire Bush regime that allowed 500,000 children to die from U.S. sanctions, not to mention the massacre and human rights abuses, massive human rights abuses that they carried out in Fallujah in Iraq. And the list just goes on and on and on. These psychopathic morons that run our world, folks, let's just call a spade a spade. That's what these people are. They are all psychopaths. How could you order the carpet bombing of another country if you were not a psychopath? How could you allow 500,000 children to die of sanctions if you were not a psychopath? How could you support coal seam gas mining, which is destroying all of the water tables in all of our countries in order to support the economic model if you were not a psychopath? 
How could you send aid to Israel to the tune of $7 million a day, knowing that this aid is being used to ethnically cleanse the people of Gaza and the people of West Bank? It's being used to bulldoze homes and put people out in the cold. It's being used to terrorize an entire nation of once proud people so that their land can be stolen. How could you support people that are doing this without being a psychopath? The thing is that none of these things would be happening if it wasn't for the psychopaths that are running our countries, folks. And the problem with the psychopaths that are running our country is that they have been trained to support a psychopathic system at all costs, even if it means discarding the population at the same time. And we as a people, what do we do? We're not allowed to question anything. We're not allowed to ask questions. We're not allowed to point the finger. We're not allowed to say the things that really matter to our politicians. We have to be politically correct. We cannot offend people. We can't do this. We can't do that. And if we do, there are the noble protectors of society that we employ to look after us who have been turned against us, who will tase us and shoot us and put us in jail and do anything that the government asks them to do. We really seriously need to step back and look at the world, folks. We have to change things, and the only thing that's going to change it is the people themselves, and we don't need any violence. We can simply stand up and call a spade a spade if people choose to embrace the warrior spirit, stand in integrity, and do the right thing. And the right thing is to speak your truth, to not be politically correct, and to call a spade a spade. If we do that, folks, we'll see some big changes in the world, but that's the only thing that will work. It's the only thing that's going to bring about any change. It has to be the people standing up, and standing in their integrity. And stop the hating folks. Stop hating everybody around you. Stop hating the Muslims. Stop hating all these people. And stop hating the Jews. The people that are populating most of Israel at the moment aren't actual Jews. They're imposters. And regardless of who they are, they've been programmed to do what they're doing anyway. Most especially in Israel, folks. I mean, we're all subject to programming in our societies. But the people in Israel simply know not what they do because they are programmed into their current actions. So you can't hate them for it. And you can't blame them for what they do. And don't blame all of this ISIS stuff on Muslims because the Muslims aren't doing this. Everything that you're being told is being spun by the media. If you want to hate anybody, hate them. But don't even hate them because they know not what they do. They're brainwashed fools and psychopaths. And that is the truth of the matter. And that's why there's no remedy ever going to be found from the government, the media, or anybody else that you perceive to have authority over you. The only remedy that we're ever going to find has to come from the hearts of the people. But they have to be prepared to stand in integrity and to speak their truth. That's our only salvation, folks, and it will be our only salvation. It is our only hope for salvation. It has to come from us. Well, I think we've reached break time here, folks, so I'll leave it there for now. And we're going to have a break. Thank you for joining me on the air today. It's a pleasure to be back on the air with you. And I'll speak to you again in a few minutes. Thanks for listening. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, so we're in a very serious situation at the moment, folks. Things have really ramped up in the last year and in the last six months especially. Things have really ramped up. What we've just seen with this guy being arrested in Paris for questioning the Holocaust is very significant as well, especially after the recent Charlie Hebdo shootings, which we are told was an attack against free speech. But here is this man now being put in jail for simply asking questions about the Holocaust, which I would suggest is in itself an attack upon free speech, the fact that this guy's been put in jail. We just saw a huge outcry about free speech, did we not? So what are we to learn from this? It would appear that free speech is only protected when one is speaking out against Muslims. In that sort of a situation, free speech is promoted and encouraged. But if one is to question the Holocaust or question the actions of Israel, then free speech is swept under the carpet and the person is put in jail. This is simply not acceptable, folks, and it spells a very, very dangerous situation for humanity. It really does, and it creates an urgent need to investigate the Holocaust because it would appear that this is one particular event that the powers that believe they be are absolutely terrified of people looking into because that is the only reason they would be putting such stringent legislation in place to prevent people from looking into this issue. It isn't a matter of respect for the dead, folks. It isn't a matter of 
respecting the poor, downtrodden Jewish people. It's a matter of being terrified of people looking into this event. And for me, that raises a huge amount of red flags because this event is being used to justify the actions of Israel. And Israel is the main destabilizing force in the world today. Almost every act of terrorism that we see on this planet can be traced back to the hand of Israel, folks. And as I said, Israel is being run by Khazars, by Zionists, by banking cartels, and it's being used as a mechanism to destabilize the world under the smokescreen of the Holocaust and the Jewish faith. And the Jewish people are getting the blame for the actions of what this state is doing. I mean, look at Benjamin Netanyahu even now attempting to derail any nuclear agreement that the United States is attempting to construct with Iran. Israel just doesn't want any type of agreement. Benjamin Netanyahu believes that the only way to achieve peace with Iran is to go and bomb them into oblivion the way they've done with everybody else. And don't forget, folks, that Iran has not attacked another nation in hundreds and hundreds of years. And even during the war with Iraq, the Iranian government refused to send missiles into Iraq because they believed it was against the will of Allah to send missiles into civilian areas. And they've claimed many times over that they do not want a nuclear weapon because they believe nuclear weapons are an abomination and are against the will of Allah. And yet, despite all of this, Benjamin Netanyahu claims that they are a massive threat to the West and the only way the world can ever be secure is to go and bomb them into oblivion. And again, folks, this is coming from Benjamin Netanyahu and it's coming from Israel, an undeclared nuclear power who refuses to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and is the only nation on Earth ever in the history of the world to have made the statement that if its existence is ever threatened... It will take the entire world down with it. And in order to do this, it has nuclear weapons trained on every major city in Europe. And they've openly stated this on several occasions, and it's called the Samson Option. You should Google it. And that's true, folks. Israel is the only nation in the history of the world that has said, if you mess with us, we'll destroy the world. And that's pretty sociopathic, folks. And Benjamin Netanyahu has been claiming Iran is three years away from a nuclear weapon since 1992. But the fact is, folks, Benjamin Netanyahu is a barefaced liar. And unbeknownst to many of the Jewish people, Israel, in its current form, is a rogue terrorist state and is the main source of instability in the world today. And it's about time the people of the world stood up and called a spade a spade. Because the war crimes of this nation is incredible, folks. And having Benjamin Netanyahu get up there and address the U.S. Congress and receive, what, 21 standing ovations. You've got a war criminal, a genocidal maniac, the worst terrorist in the world today, standing before U.S. Congress and receiving 21 standing ovations for spewing forth lie after lie after lie. If there was any justice in the world, this man would be taken to the Hague and he would be summarily tried and hung because that is what he deserves. And our politicians have displayed across the board, they have displayed their heartlessness and their callous disregard for the human rights abuses that are happening in Palestine. The Foreign Minister of Australia, Julie Bishop, this sociopathic moron, she actually said to someone, we should stop saying that the Israeli Settlement Initiative is a war crime because it is counterproductive to the peace process. And we should stop calling it a war crime anyway because she is not aware of any law that is being broken. Well, Julie, it's called the Fourth Geneva Convention. You're not allowed to build settlements on occupied territory. I suggest you go out and get an education in law before you go out and get a job as a foreign minister. And I suggest this clown show farce of a liberal government we've got in Australia with its moronic imbecile Tony Abbott at the helm go and locate some people with some degree of intelligence to populate their ranks rather than people like Julie Bishop, who's a foreign minister who doesn't even understand what is written in the Geneva Convention and doesn't even appear to understand what human rights are. And to make matters worse, there she was in the same breath, standing at the grave of Ariel Sharon and putting a wreath of flowers on it. Ariel Sharon's grave, folks, the butcher of Beirut one of the worst war criminals and mass murderers of the 20th century, and there is our foreign minister putting flowers on this psychopath's grave. And that should tell you everything you need to know about this moronic liberal government and the warmongers and psychopaths that we have populating it at the moment in this country. 
And that's just this country, folks. And it's the same all around the world. Anybody who's supporting the war crimes of Israel is a psychopath, folks. And we need to do something about this. We need to stand up and call a spade a spade and call these people out for their actions. And stop with all of this political correctness and stop believing we've got to play by their rules because their rules are simply legislation which is put in place to remove actual law from the planet and replace it with the will of politicians. And their will is always that we do not have the ability or the means to investigate them or to hold them accountable for their actions. And if we do, they cry national security, like they did with Edward Snowden. All of the talk of all the information that Edward Snowden released suddenly became a debate over whether he was the good guy or the bad guy and whether this was a threat to national security or not. Forget about all the crimes that he exposed. Why weren't the authorities in that country, why weren't the authorities in the United States, the police and the legal system, why didn't they go and arrest all those politicians straight away? And all this brain-dead public out there that's getting fed all this stuff from the media debating whether this is a matter of national security or not. Of course it's a matter of national security, because the security of the nation can never be assured when you've got criminals running the country. That's the problem. Forget about the leaks. The leaks should be there. It should all be transparent anyway, so that everybody knows what their governments are doing. We don't need secretive governments that spy on their citizens to keep them safe, because who's going to keep us safe from the governments? Because all the governments do is start wars, folks. That's all they do is start wars and take rights away from the people, spy on their people, extract resources from their people, steal the children of the people and do all of the stuff that they're doing, folks. It's just out of control what these people get away with because we're constrained by political correctness and we're controlled and taught what to think by the media. We don't ever look at the real issues. The real issue in the Edward Snowden case is not that someone breached security protocols by releasing information through unofficial channels. The issue with the Edward Snowden case is that the government is a bunch of criminals and all of the organisations they run are criminal organisations and so the nation is not secure because the enemy is in the gates. They have taken over the government, they've taken over the entire system and that's what needs to be addressed. And something else that is extremely important and extremely significant in regard to the Edward Snowden case is how everything I just mentioned was whitewashed over by the media and suddenly it all became about whether he did the right thing or not. It all became about him and not about the information. And that is the media, that is the criminals and the liars and the scumbags that populate the mainstream media that spin these stories and feed this rubbish to the public and control what they think. And that's why the scumbags and the talking heads in the mainstream media need to be held accountable for human rights violations, war crimes and crimes against humanity, just as much as every member of our governments. What needs to happen in cases like the Edward Snowden case is that all the crimes that Edward Snowden made the public aware of need to be investigated and all the criminals that are carrying out these actions need to be arrested and removed from positions of authority and some transparency needs to be put in place so that this doesn't happen again. Forget about the debates that the media tells you you should be getting involved in. Forget about the left and right and all this sort of stuff. This is a humanitarian issue, folks. All of these issues are humanitarian issues, and the problem is that we have governments that have lost their humanity. And that's really the heart of the issue, folks, because what we are facing on this planet is not an economic or political crisis. What we are facing is a humanitarian crisis, a humanitarian crisis of epic proportions. Look at what is happening in every country that Western governments are attempting to free from terrorism, in inverted commas. What they are doing is they are going in and carrying out wholesale terrorism against all of these countries, and they are claiming that anybody who speaks out against them or anybody who fights back is a terrorist. Take Gaza Strip, and Hamas is a perfect example of this. Hamas is labelled a terrorist organisation because it stands up to Israeli terrorism, which is constant and aggressive and happens every single day and has been going on for 67 years and yet anybody who stands up against it is called a terrorist. You've got General el-Sisi, this moron so-called president from Egypt, self-styled president, nothing more than a brutal dictator but of course totally supported by the West. 
stole the presidency through a military coup using unbridled terrorism against his citizens, is still conducting terrorism against the people of Rafa, bulldozing homes, moving people, all sorts of people disappearing in Egypt, reporters being arrested and put in jail. Massive amounts of terrorism that this guy is carrying out is in massive support of Israel, has got his eye on the gas fields off Gaza shore and has now made the statement that Hamas is a terrorist organisation which gives him the green light to go and attack Gaza Strip. Isn't that wonderful, folks? All the government has to do in one country is say, oh, we believe the government next door are a bunch of terrorists, so now we can legally go and bomb them. Wouldn't that be wonderful if that's what France decided it wanted to do with Germany, or Germany decided that was what it wanted to do with France? All they have to do is write legislation and it becomes legal, and the international community does nothing about it. Well, of course they would in the case of France and Germany, but if someone does it against Palestine, it doesn't matter because they're just Palestinians and it supports the Israeli cause of destabilisation. You know, I believe that all of these issues, the issue of what Israel is doing, the issue of what's happening in Ukraine, the the problems that we have everywhere, folks, if people can put down their nationalism and their religious and ethnic differences and understand that these differences that they believe exist are programs that they are running. These are other people's ideas, other people's versions of reality that have been instilled into people's minds and they've caused them to look at the world through a skewed and distorted perspective. Ultimately, there are no countries on this planet. We made the whole thing up. Ultimately, there are no different peoples on this planet. Sure, there are different peoples with different attributes from different areas on the earth, but ultimately we are one human family. There's no real difference between someone from Poland and someone from South America, except for the environment in which they grew up, which gave them different characteristics, different personalities, different ways of doing things. It's these sorts of different locations that create the wonderful diversity in the human spirit the diversity in the human family, the diversity that gives us the ability to reach these incredible heights and to be an amazing creative force, if that's what we want it to be. But we've got all these wars, and we've got all this stuff going on, all this debt slavery and all this division and all this finger-pointing at everybody else, and you may think, oh, now you're just being a hypocrite because you've just spent the whole show finger-pointing at Israel. Well, yeah, I'm finger-pointing at Israel, the mechanism, but not the people, because the people have been programmed. It's the same as... Members of some of these terrorist splinter cells. And sure, there are terrorist splinter cells. There are people who are not part of any group, who aren't part of any controlled opposition, who go out and do bad things. But they do so because they're programmed. People who steal from other people do so because they're programmed. They're programmed to think the economic system's real. They're programmed to believe that they live in a state of scarcity, in a state of shortage, which they do because of this economic system. And so they resort to whatever means they can to create the abundance that they believe they need because they believe prosperity to actually be abundance but prosperity isn't abundance prosperity is something that is financially gained and financially viable it's a financial term you don't need to be prosperous you need to live in your natural state which is abundance and money is the tool that is used to separate you from that but I'm going off on tangents here. What I'm trying to say, folks, all of the issues that we've got that I've addressed in the world today, we've really got to look at how this mechanism is working, and we can't be afraid to stand up and speak our truth. I don't hate Jews, folks, but I don't like what Israel is doing because Israel is a major destabilizing mechanism. It is the biggest threat to world peace that exists today. And that is no joke. That is deadly serious. And that isn't anti-Semitic. The whole concept of anti-Semitism, the whole smokescreen of the Holocaust, it's all been set up to allow the state of Israel to get away with what it's doing. Because what it's doing is just waving itself flagrantly in the face of all international law. It is displaying utter contempt for all that is good, all that is just, all that is right, all that is humanitarian. And it's doing so under the guise of victimhood of the people who live within its borders. And this victimhood is very much in question. And you can tell it's in question, folks, because of the stringent rules that are being put in place to prevent anybody from questioning the issue of the Holocaust. And the Holocaust is what is allowing the State of Israel to get away with the utterly contemptuous and inhuman actions that it is carrying out daily. 
And it isn't just carrying them out against the people of Palestine, folks. It's carrying them out against the people of the world. It really is. The influence that this state has on so many countries now is absolutely unacceptable. And it's unacceptable because there is no criticism of the hold that this state has on the world that is allowed because it hides behind the smokescreen of the Jewish people. It hides behind the smokescreen of the Holocaust and it labels you as being anti-Semitic for speaking out against the political actions of an entity which is controlled by a banking cartel. It's not anything to do with the Jewish people. It's simply a destabilizing mechanism that is using the smokescreen of the Holocaust and the plight of the Jewish people to carry out some of the most nefarious activities that have ever been carried out in the history of the world. And that is the modern day state of Israel. And if you think that's anti-Semitic, then you need to go and wash your ears out a little bit and wake up to reality because it's not anti-Semitism at all. It's simply looking at the globe and looking how this chess game is being played and seeing who the major players are and what moves they're making. And anybody out there who thinks that this show has been an anti-Semitic show needs to really seriously wake up to themselves. Because the most anti-Semitic organization on this planet at the moment is the state of Israel and the most anti-Semitic people in there are those who populate the Israeli government with Benjamin Netanyahu being number one. Like I said at the start of the show, folks, when looking at the problems of the world, it's important that we look at them with a degree of intelligence. It's important that we put our views aside, our political views, and what's been programmed into us. We put it all aside and step back and look at it. And I've done that. And when I do that, folks, and I look at the world, this is what I see. I see a big chess game being played, and I see the human race being played like a fiddle. I see a bunch of Khazar imposters and banking cartels hiding behind the smoke screen of the Jewish people in order to carry out some of the worst crimes that have ever been carried out against humanity. And if I speak out against that, I'm labelled as an anti-Semite. And this happens for speaking out against Israel and against people who are not Semitic and have nothing to do with the Jewish people, are not supporting the Jewish people, are not supporting the state of Israel, and are not doing anything good in the world today. They are not victims. They are not anything they pretend to be. They are psychopathic criminals who are destroying this world, and it's happening because people are too damn scared to speak out. Well, it's about time we did speak out, folks. Because this world is run by psychopaths and it's wrapped in bullshit. And that is the truth of the matter. And until people are prepared to stand up and say that and speak the truth, it's just going to get worse. There is no political remedy. There are no people you can vote in and vote out. There is no movement you can join. If you're not prepared to stand up and speak your truth, then the world's just going to go to hell in a handbasket the way it's been going for the last century or decade or millennia or however long you want to look at this. It's certainly been going that way for the last 50 years. It's certainly been going that way since World War II or certainly even since World War I. But it's really, really escalated since we saw the false flag of 9-11, which was not carried out by Muslims. It was carried out by Israel, and the proof is there. It's right there, all in the public domain. You can find it if you look, so go and investigate it. And again, folks, it isn't the Jews. It's the people who run Israel. And who runs Israel are banking cartels. That's why this whole thing's been set up. That's what this whole war on terror is about. It's all about imposing these central banks all around the world. And it's time we woke up to things. But that's about it for me now, I think, folks. We've reached the end of the show. Thank you for joining me on the air today. It's a pleasure to be back. I'm sorry it was such an angry show for the first show of the new season, but... But recent events in the world have created a need for me to take things to the next level and to really start speaking out. So thank you for joining me on this show today, and I thank you for putting up with my tirades. Thank you again to anybody who has ever made a contribution to the website. It would be great if someone could at the moment, actually, folks. That's the thing. When I go off air, people just don't seem to contribute, and I've been off trying to make some money so that I can actually keep doing these shows, but it really depends on people helping out sometimes. So... So please make a contribution to the website if you can, and thank you to anybody who has in the past. That is it for me, folks. I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Please take good care until then. In La Keshe.